This episode contains adult themes and is not appropriate for all audiences. Listener discretion is advised. Hello, the world. This is They Will Kill, a true crime podcast. I'm Courtney Eck. And I'm Sadie Eck. And it's Sadie's night tonight on a Scorpio full moon. That's a scorpion tail. (laughs) I feel a little crazy. Do you guys feel a little crazy? I feel a little crazy. Yeah. (laughs) I know. We were just dishing before we started to record. And I was saying that my whole house has been crazy except for my three-year-old who is a Scorpio. Yeah. Couldn't be happier today. He sucked all the energy from the rest of us. (laughs) Yeah, he's got power coursing through his blood and his veins and hopefully this makes everyone feel better i'm really excited for it (laughs) well you know make you feel better in that weird sort of awful way i know that we'll never understand and that's why we keep doing it to try to understand it but we never will so here we are here we go why don't you tell us tell us a terrible tale this is the ding family murders on april 29th 2011 which happens to be the day Prince William and Kate Middleton were married. Oh. The Northampton police received a chilling 999 call at 3.32 p.m. During the 22nd recording, two young women can be heard screaming for their lives in the background Mm. before the call is abruptly disconnected. Oh, God, that makes me want to vomit. Yeah, the audio could, I couldn't find any of the audio, which I don't think is a bad thing. Yeah. I don't think it's available. The 999 operator traced the call and dispatched police, but when they arrived, the occupants of the home were fine and said they had not called for help that day. What? That seemed scarier somehow. Mm -hmm. Rather than retrace the call or use a more accurate mapping technology available to them, the control room supervisor logged the call as closed and everyone went about their day. Oh, no. Two days would pass before Jason Horsley decided to check on his neighbors, the Ding family, who lived in Pioneer Close, Wooten Fields neighborhood. The normally busy household had been unusually quiet for the past few days. In fact, he hadn't seen anyone come or go, and he wanted to be sure everyone was okay. I don't think they're okay. Mm -mm. When Jason knocked on the door, there was no answer. But when he peered through one of the windows, he could clearly see the legs of someone sticking out from under a blue velvet curtain. Oh, my God. Jason said, quote, I rang the doorbell and they didn't answer. I called out their names. No response. I unbolted the gate and looked in the kitchen window. I could see like a brown gunk on the floor. At first, I thought a radiator had probably fallen off the wall. But then I looked harder and I noticed what looked like a leg. I ran straight back home and called police. Ugh. When police arrived, they found 46-year-old Ji Fung, or known as Jeff Ding, his wife, 47-year-old Gua, she also went by Helen Chewy, both stabbed to death and hidden under the curtain in their kitchen. Clearing the house, police ran upstairs. An officer let out a warning to two people in a bedroom before realizing, horrified, that they were two dead children. Ugh. They had found the Ding's two daughters, 18-year-old Shing, or Nancy, and 12-year-old Alice, who had also been stabbed to death. Ugh. Alice was found on the bed, and Shing was found in a prayer position on the bedroom floor. Oh my god. God, this is such a nightmare. It's so awful. Gil Amos, a neighbor and friend of the family, said children who had been playing outside were, quote, sheltered in one of the back gardens as police and ambulances filled the cul-de-sac. Quote, every community will get a tragedy at some time, but it was like a nightmare, worse than any nightmare you could think of, she said. As the pieces of the puzzle fell into place, police quickly determined the 999 call that had been mishandled had come from Alice's phone. The two screaming girls heard on the call had been the sisters desperate for help as a madman tore through their home on a murderous rampage. Mm -mm. 
an autopsy would show that Ji Feng had been stabbed 23 times, mm-hmm. Gua 13 times, Xing 11 times, and Alice 4 times. Ah, the fuck. The killer managed to stab each person in the heart and lungs. Both Ji Feng and Xing had defensive wounds on their hands and arms, indicating they had tried to fight their attacker. <sighs> Ji Feng and Gua moved to the UK from China in the early 90s, where they both worked hard to build a life. They both graduated college with chemistry degrees and had their two daughters in their early years in Northampton. At the time of his death, Ji Feng was a senior lecturer at Manchester Metropolitan University's School of Chemical and Environmental Science. Wow. And also, I know it, and also owned a string of Chinese medicine shops. Gua taught Mandarin at Alice's school and was also a translator. She was known for being a wonderful mother and a hard worker. Xing and Alice were both outstanding students and talented violin players who toured Europe with the Northamptonshire Youth Orchestra. Xing had just accepted an offer from the University of Nottingham to study medicine in the fall. One of her teachers, Sarah Dixon, said, quote, Xing was so bright and so much fun. She was a lovely girl. She was both a serious academic and an entertaining companion. She had so much going for her, which made it feel particularly galling that such a dreadful thing could happen to such a bright spirit. Yeah, right at the beginning of her life. Mm-hmm. The entire community was devastated by the brutal murders. It didn't seem possible that something so horrific could happen there. Xing's friends were granted special consideration during their A-level exams, and Xing was posthumously awarded top grades. Quote, the Dings were a very quiet family, very nice, said Jason Horsley, which was the neighbor who'd found the family. Always polite, very pleasant. The children were lovely. It was difficult to think of something of this magnitude and so graphic had happened. Uh, when you look at pictures of this family, they're like hiking the mountains and full of smiles. And, you know, it's just one of those where you can look yeah. at them and be like, they loved each other very yep. much. Yeah, they were very happy. They were very successful. Yep. Smart, talented. Yep. Should still be alive. Yep. As police investigated the crime scene, they found a kitchen knife that did not match the other knives in the house next to the sink. They believed it was the murder weapon and that the killer had washed off the knife after the murders and left it on the counter. (sighs) They also found forensic evidence, including fingerprints, littered throughout the bloody house. I think one report I even, I don't know if I talk about it later, but like handprints and fingerprints all up the entire stairwell. Uh So he killed the parents downstairs and then went up to find the daughters and just left this trail of fucking Who terribleness is this person money and the family's car were also missing from the house checking their records they realized the police had been to the ding home at eight in the morning the day they had been discovered really yes so authorities had been checking on a missing man axing du who had previous business relationships with ji Feng. The two had met when their wives became friends and eventually owned a Chinese medicine shop together with another man named Paul Delaney. Things between the two turned sour after Ji Feng accused Du of stealing money. Mm. Du was even arrested but released without any charges being brought against him. Not looking good for Du. Yeah. Couldn't find a lot of details exact about what exactly happened, but stealing money, not good. No. No. After this incident, the Dews were forced out of the business. Three years later, Dew decided to sue the Dings over the joint ownership, which would begin a long 10-year legal battle. Whoa. Mm-hmm. So, Holy shit. Yes. So Dew stole money from the company he owned with the Dings. Uh-huh. And then he, Dew, decided they forced him out of their business, their part of the business, and then he decided three years later to sue them. And then continued on for another like seven years Jesus, to try to take back his part of the business. Uh, that's a really, really long civil suit. That's crazy. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. Right? Leading up to the murder, Dew had recently lost his last appeal and had been ordered to pay 88,000 pounds, which is about $122,000 wow. in legal fees. Wow. Du's wife had reported him missing and told police he may have been on his way to confront Ji Feng 
after brooding over his legal loss. Mm -hmm. Police had knocked on the door of the family home, but when no one answered, they slipped their business card through the mail slot and left. That's so creepy to think about. Mm -hmm. When they compared the fingerprints found at the crime scene to Dew's, guess what? It was not Dew's. (laughs) <laughs> they were dues. Oh, it was a match. no, what a shocker. Mm, no. On May 4th, five days after the Ding family was murdered, they named Du as their prime suspect, but thought they might be dealing with a murder-suicide. Mm-hmm. Despite this theory, they would begin the largest manhunt in the history of Northamptonshire, with more than 240 police officers deployed to try to track him down. As they worked to locate Dew, they learned the night before the murder, he had been served with a, quote, freezing injunction obtained by their third partner, Paul Delaney. Uh Uh-oh. This kept Dew from selling his assets, including his house, which Dew had been in the process of selling to a family member, so it wouldn't be considered an asset when he was made to pay his legal fees. Uh Uh-huh. So Dew's wife told police that he had been furious and brooded through the night. The next morning, he said goodbye to his wife. She would usually go to work with him, but stayed home that day to watch the royal wedding. (laughs) Du went to his clinic where he worked as a Chinese medicine practitioner. He put a farewell note for his wife in the appointment book. Translated from Mandarin, it read, quote, best wishes or eternal blessing, and said, Qian Qian, which is the pet name for their son, will care about mom forever. Everyone has to say farewell one day. Oh, man, what a crappy farewell note. I know. (laughs) This guy is just crap. Yeah. And I'm sure it's a cultural thing, but if my wife was going to murder suicide and said best wishes, I would be so Mm -hmm. mad. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Mm -hmm. Don't best wishes me. (laughs) I'm your fucking wife. Everyone has to say farewell one day. Well, you know what? Do go fuck yourself. (laughs) Yeah, you have have a certain amount of control over that, bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially when you do this. Yeah. He then grabbed a knife he had at the shop and went to the Ding home. After the murders, police believed Du stayed in the home for up to six hours. No, no, no. Yes. It's so scary. This whole, that, oh, God. Six hours. I don't like it. home invasion. No. He then stole the family's car and drove to a nearby gas station where he bought a map of the area and a banana milkshake. What a fucking weirdo. This mm-hmm. guy is really tripping my weirdo mm-hmm. fucking stuff. <laughs> yes. They believed he then drove to Paul Delaney's home, the other business partner, uh-huh. to confront and likely attack him too. But mm. when he wasn't home, he continued on to London. Oh my God. I have shivers. Can you imagine? I know. No. I know. I think that I, uh, Paul Delaney has passed since past you know he's died himself but to be that guy like oh my god i can't so glad he wasn't home i know i think a lot about people who know that who like that radio rental episode where the girl doesn't let the serial killer in her house yes Mm -hmm. you're the girl who didn't get killed by the serial killer what (laughs) it just got chilled (laughs) no so scary extremely scary yeah As the car entered the capital, automatic license plate recognition cameras failed to detect the car. Dew abandoned the Ding's car in St. John's Wood, where it remained for 11 days and accrued nine parking tickets. (laughs) On April 30th, using his own passport, he bought a one-way ticket to Paris. This was also the day his wife reported him missing, but he was already out of the country. He does not care about covering up his crimes. Not even Mm -hmm. a little bit. Du's trail went cold after he fled to Paris. It would take more than 14 months before he was found. Holy shit. I know. Quote, I find that unforgivable, said Glenn Timmons, which I think is adorable. He's the now retired detective superintendent who initially investigated the case. Quote, I cannot ever reconcile myself with the murder of those two girls. I can understand how adults fall out. I can understand how things get out of hand in the spur of the moment. I've dealt with all that kind of thing. But the murder of those two girls in their bedroom, helpless, it beggars belief. It's something that will be on my mind forever. I'll never forget it. And it'll go with me for the rest of my life. Yep. 
Police released CCTV footage of Du from the day of the murder, hoping more witnesses would lead them to their suspect. And this CCTV footage is just like he's sort of an older man. He's, Mm -hmm. you know, in his 50s, small Mm -hmm. and just sort of shuffly. And they show him like getting on the the bus and shuffling around. And it's just like so unassuming. It's It's so scary. That's way scarier. Way scarier. It also explains why he needed to take six hours to recover and then get his fucking Nana shake so that he didn't <laughs> get a damn Charlie horse while he was trying to kill his other business partner. Totally. You know, it's like, a good mm, point. Yes. You need to get some fucking potassium. Try to get a smoothie on the way, you fucking creeper. Mm-hmm. God. Mm-hmm. Yes. So creepy. So creepy. Yep. Like asking people where the neighborhood was, like how no. to get there. No. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's my Of course nightmare. they told him. Like, of course they would tell this, like, kindly looking older man. Of course. Man. Yeah, they're like, he's their uncle or anything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. He was also featured on the BBC show Crime Watch Daily. Because it took two days to discover the family, Do had a large head start and the police struggled to catch up. Mm-hmm. Quote, from the outset, we were days behind, recalls Timmons. It was like crawling through mud. <sighs> They also expanded their search internationally with the help of Interpol and the Serious Organized Crime Agency. Nice. Tips started to flood in, but it would take time to get through them all. They would question more than 400 people thought to be due, and nine were arrested, but turned out not to be their suspect. (laughs) Oh, no, man. (laughs) I think some of those arrests might have also been people they thought were connected with him. Uh Um, So I don't know that all nine were thought to be due, but weren't. That would be pretty fucking tragic and super <laughs> embarrassing to arrest so nine dues. Dues. Mm-hmm. When authorities received a tip from a construction worker who believed they worked with Dew in Morocco, they decided to fly to Spain and ask the Moroccan authorities to interview Dew. He was found living in a partially built block of flats, sleeping on a makeshift bed, and using a small gas stove to cook meals. Man. Workers took pity on Dew, who was described as, quote, scruffy looking and only had plastic sandals to wear at the construction site. They would often bring him food, trying to help him any way they could. When police confronted him with the evidence they had, he couldn't deny his involvement in the murders and admitted to everything. Wow. He was extradited back to the UK, where he would stand trial. Dew would go on to tell police and later a psychiatrist that he had been terribly depressed about losing his court battle. It's hard. It's hard mm-hmm. when you have to it's take really sad. take it responsibility for your actions. It's right. Really, the court it's battle that sad. you put yourself into. Yeah. And but you Sadie, kept appealing. <laughs> you should, he should have won it. And then he would have felt really happy and not sad. Mm-hmm. Right. When he received the freeze on his assets, it pushed him over the edge. When he arrived at the Ding home, Ji Feng saw him coming through the kitchen window. He thought Ju was coming to confront him about their legal dispute, but had no idea the deadly intent behind Ju's visit. No, God. It's like if anybody in my life came up to the window and even if we had falling out, had bad blood. Right. You know, I don't know anybody. There's nobody in my life that I would consider capable of that. You no, know, of course maybe, not. They maybe some in your life. weirdos from high school or something, but... Even yeah. then, no. Like, the dude who comes up and wants to sell me windows or whatever, i just like, no, go away. I'm not thinking, like... I mean, sometimes I think that, but that's because I do too many murder stories, but... Right. You know, like, you don't really think anybody's going to come to your house and kill you. And your like, whole entire family. No. Right. We would never be able to open our doors to anybody ever again. Well, it's unfathomable. It's like, you can come at me and be super pissed off and then, like, fucking sue me again. That's really stressful. That sucks. That's really Mm -hmm. uncool. But Mm -hmm. to be able to get that mad that you think you have to kill, like, one person, your business Mm -hmm. partner, let alone his children. Mm -hmm. I I don't know. It's so fucked up. Yep. Du demanded money from Ji Feng before pulling the knife hidden in his backpack and attacking him in the kitchen. Mm-hmm. And again, it's like this kind of old man's backpack. It, yeah. I, the image is really skeezed me out. Yeah. I think just because he's so unassuming. Um, yeah. You know, it, and then he'd like pull the knife out of your backpack. Ugh. Well, because it makes me think that he had to have such a crazy rage inside of him that was, he was able to pull that off. 
Yes. You know, like when somebody gets adrenaline or when you're watching a horror movie and the guy switches and the evil guy comes mm -hmm. out, that's what I'm picturing for mm -hmm. him to be able to terrorize that's... and brutally murder four people mm -hmm. with his mm -hmm. old man knife out of his old man backpack. That's scary. Mm -hmm. So not so that I think that people scary. in their fifties are old, just so you know, but I'm just picturing well, him it's older because it's mm -hmm. scarier. Yes. <laughs> so during the struggle, Gua came into the room to try to help. Du then turned on her and began attacking. Mm. Once Ji Feng and Guo were on the floor, he could hear the girls, who no doubt heard their parents being murdered downstairs, mm -mm. screaming. Mm -mm. He then decided to attack them as well. Xing died fighting, trying to protect her little sister. Mm. It's going to make me cry. Yeah. When he moved to attack Alice, she did not fight, but laid on her bed, curled up in the fetal position. Mm. He stabbed her four times and let her bleed to death on her bed. He said she did not try to struggle. Jesus. When he was finished brutally murdering this lovely family, he washed his hands and the knife, stole some money from the home, and then decided to take a nap. I don't like it. Mm-mm. After sleeping in the Ding's home for a few hours, he stole their car and fled the country. I really, really don't like it. It's very unsettling. Yes. And the fact that the 999 call just happened to be mismapped. Yeah. I don't know. Like, right. They, they, they could have found him right then. They could right. have gotten there. And Potentially saved It seems saved very Alice. unlikely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, every, you know, the coroner's reports and all of the, the experts said that it was super unlikely that any of the members of the family would have been saved had right. they been found right um and then they all were stabbed in their their act like their hearts right so, yeah. um it's hard but to come back from still that. yeah you could go and just go ahead and catch her you know capture him right away <laughs> yeah just save yourself oh. a fuck ton of resources yeah find the napping asshole sleeping on the couch oh God. fucking no by the time the Ding family was found, Du had traveled through France and Spain and then took a ferry to Morocco. As he moved through Morocco, he was arrested near the border of Algeria. Authorities believed he was in the country illegally, but when they were unable to identify him, he was, a re he was released. Wow. Which, coming from, you know, like our fucking bullshit border patrol. Right? Could you imagine being like, well, I can't identify you, so go ahead. Yeah. Bye. Can I see your ID? <laughs> I don't think you're supposed to be here. Um, I don't have it. Okay. Oh, shit. Okay, you're free to go. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we weren't prepared for that. Uh, you can just go. <laughs> yeah, very easy. <laughs> and I wish it was that way. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's not. Nope. He then worked odd jobs and relied on the kindness of strangers to get him through the next year. Kindness, mm. he's never returned. Mm-hmm. Dew's trial began in November of 2013. His defense team, hoping for a manslaughter conviction, relied on the diminished responsibility defense, blaming his depression for his terrible actions. Depressed people don't just snap and kill mm, entire families. No. Almost never. No, no I... Yeah. It's not a thing. <laughs> no, I don't, like, not depression. No. No. The prosecution rejected this claim, saying while Du may have had depression, the murders were simply an act of revenge. Yep. The lead prosecutor described Du as a, quote, man on a mission, saying, quote, this was considered an act of revenge executed in an unbelievably calm and cold-blooded manner. He planned to kill. He intended to kill. He did kill four times. Mm-hmm. The jury saw CCTV footage that showed Du casually wandering around the bus station as he asked the attendants how to get to the neighborhood where the Ding family lived. It clearly showed him wearing his backpack that hid the knife inside. They also heard the terrible 999 call, causing multiple jury members to wipe tears from their eyes. Hmm. They heard testimony from one of Alice's school friends and neighbor who saw a strange man outside the Ding home on the day of the murders. She told her dad, who went out and saw the man but believed him to be family, and told his daughter to play away from the house. Ugh. Neither one of them noticed any blood on his clothes, but said that his beige jacket he had been wearing was, quote, buttoned up to the neck. 
She would tell her father a few days later after the family was discovered that she had heard a, quote, shriek that same day, but at the time didn't know if it was someone in distress or having fun. Mm -hmm. She had peered through a hole in the fence to look at the ding home after hearing the noise, but didn't see anything out of the ordinary. Oh, boy, boy. No, that poor girl. Poor kid. The trial lasted just under two weeks, and the jury of eight women and four men took just over three hours to find Axang Du guilty of murder on all four counts. Yeah, no big fucking surprise. I know, right? During the sentencing hearing, the court judge told Du, quote, These were cold-blooded murders, which in my judgment were premeditated and were considered acts of revenge. You did not lose your self-control in killing Jeff Ding. In effect, you executed the man you hated. Mm -hmm. He continues, the psychological and emotional impact of the destruction of the entire Ding family upon Ji Feng and Helen Ding's parents and the rest of their families had been truly devastating. I have observed the dignified way in which you have conducted yourselves throughout this trial, which must have been truly horrendous for you in a way that the rest of us cannot understand. Can you imagine? I would rip him to shreds. No. No, I, I would, can't imagine. I would do crazy things, terrible, terrible, crazy things to yes anybody and all things. And no, no, no. <sighs> Just, mm. I know nothing I can say will assuage the pain of the deaths of your sister, daughter, and family. I just hope at least the fact that the man responsible for the deaths has been brought to justice will provide you with some closure over these terrible events. Du was then sentenced to 40 years to life in prison. It's very unlikely he will ever leave prison alive. Yeah, let's fucking hope not. Yep. Gua's father, Zhu Yao, who sat at the back of the courtroom every day of the trial listening to proceedings through a translator, said his daughter had been, quote, a good mother, a good wife, and she taught the two girls very well, and said hearing the evidence in the court had been, quote, like a knife to the body. Quote, when the two families heard about this, it was like the whole sky has fallen down, he said. We all cried together. Mm -hmm. Although it's very unlikely the family would have been saved if the 999 call had been handled appropriately, the what-ifs will always haunt the Dings family's loved ones. No doubt. And that is the Ding family murder. That is a, that is a <laughs> full-blown fucking horror show, dude. That is so, so, so sad. Mm -hmm. I just cannot, I can't imagine being one of their loved ones and thinking about what they went through. I'd like, no. I don't think you could ever, ever get anywhere over that. Like that, I don't know. It's, mm -hmm. <sighs> I think that's yeah. the hardest part about death and grief is the guilt and the this just weird feeling like I should have protected them. You know, I think it's mm -hmm. just that is yeah. the thing that rises to the surface the most under normal circumstances, even, you know, right. But under these extreme circumstances, I don't know how your brain and your heart and your fucking soul processes something like that. Yeah, I don't know either. Those poor people. No. I know. And not, a, I, you know, I couldn't find much about his background, but it just seemed like very ordinary you know, dudes. Yeah. Yeah. It feels like Just you're a accountant, dude, like you're doing accountant stuff. killing you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah, know what exactly. I mean? Yes. Yeah. That's like, exactly what it feels like. like our, what... Your insurance adjuster. <laughs> yes. And the fact that that rage lived inside of him in that way is so scary. Yeah. It's like, yep. uh, He's... what's the DBK, BDK, TDT? Why can I not B think of? TK. Thank you. God. <laughs> Isn't that weird? <laughs> Your brain just break. Yeah. BTK. Yeah. Exactly yeah. like that. Yeah. yeah like the, the fucking father of the year. Kind of, yeah. I don't like that mm -hmm. at all. That's really bad. It's really, no. really bad. No. I mean, he stabbed the family over 50 times. That's not just the revenge. That's dark. Like dark, right. dark, he, dark. Yeah, yeah. He didn't just use a gun and move on with his day. He mm -hmm. languished in it. Oh mm -hmm. God! And then napped there. I took a nap before getting his nana shake. <laughs> oh, well, that's just because his old ass bones are like, oh God. Yeah, man. It's like we've said before. It's really too bad that you don't get monster face if you're a monster. Seriously, you know. 
Yeah. Maybe we'll figure that out. Maybe genetically, um, uh, this is not at all problematic what I'm about to propose. <laughs> We can figure out how to like tie that to people's genetics so that if you are predisposed <laughs> to extreme violence and sociopathy, <laughs> gonna have a monster face. It's gonna be real obvious. Yeah. We'll AI that shit. What was that movie called? The with Tom Cruise. And yeah, exactly. They Minority Report. The, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah, Convicting watch. people of crimes they have yet to commit. Probably will exactly give it just give a monster face, whatever that means. <laughs> yeah, it's fine, it will never go yeah, wrong. They won't find no. reasons to ways to fuck that up. No, there will never be a movie made about the monster faced person that's really good in their soul but needs to Get figure f- out a way to break through their monster face. <laughs> <laughs> I just watched that movie this weekend. Have you ever seen the movie Freaks? It's like a lesser. Kind of, it's sci-fi, horror-y. It's like Emil, uh, is it Emil Hirsch? And the parents, like, are freaks. They're, they have special powers and the government no, has... I don't think I have. Um, two movies I watched this weekend. I'm like, I've definitely have never seen these movies. And I, no shit, like, the very last fucking frame of the movie, I was like, oh, yeah, I totally have seen this before. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. It's yeah. been a, done a million times, but I thought maybe it wouldn't be different it wasn't but it's still so funny yeah if you like stuff like that and they're like well the daughter we gotta save the mom and uh, the government's gonna get her and whatever um yeah it's pretty good i was i've been thinking about how you and i both have this ability to like watch something or read something or whatever and then it's just immediately out of our brains yeah uh it became clear or the normal after our last episode the one that you did, what's their name? See, I oh, can't even Leonard, remember. Yeah, Leonard yeah. Lake and Charles Ng. Yeah. Right, and everybody, not everybody, a lot of people are like, oh my god, you guys, hello. It's yeah. Like, so popular. And I'm like, well, maybe. Maybe. But not in my brain. Yeah. But I'm, I do. Th- I think our, our differentiation with that one, just to be clear, and a lot of people were like, yeah, I've heard of them. And it did like tingle my senses. I've definitely sure. not, not ever heard of them. But the fact that they're not like Ted Bundy level or DBK right. or TDK or LT right. C down system, <laughs> um, right. which is it got wrong too. Level famous is what we were referring yes. to. Like they should even be the... just that. Not every single podcast has already covered it. Like they do exactly so many of them, right. right precisely. Yes, but yeah, and I did. I loved American Justice. That's what other people were saying. They did an American Justice show about it, and I yeah. did. I loved watching that show. Whether, but that was like twenty years ago, right? Anyway, so anyway, yeah. I just I, for me, I think it's a lot about how I can totally absorb something and be like totally in it one minute, and then give me a year, and I'm like, uh, never saw that movie. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know. Totally, it's funny though because with true crime. I don't remember names. I'm really, really bad with names. Mm-hmm. Even like on our Patreon hangout party, people would be like, uh, what about, you know, Jennifer Wilson or whatever? And I'd be like, oh, who's that? I don't know that case. And they're like, uh, you covered it. It was like episode 13. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I am really no. bad with names, but I can remember details of the cases. Details. Yeah, for yeah. sure. For sure. Yes. Yeah, me too. Anyway, speaking anything? of names, let's do it. Uh, you guys, every time we think they're dead, you fucking fire hose me right in the mouth hole. <laughs> and I love it. Let's see what we got going on this week. I gotta go back up. I don't know why I keep every single thing I need to keep track of on one notes page. One. <laughs> I mean, yeah, like, you can delete it and start it again. I could just like start folder. No, I just put, I mean, like mm-hmm. the hashtags that we use are on here. Uh, <laughs> stuff I need to remember for work is that it's the fucking all on the system. same page. Yes. One notes. It is like <laughs> one page in within notes. I just open oh notes and then I scroll around on this <laughs> 5,000 paragraph notes page. Oh, that's really tricky. <laughs> yeah. It's my, it's the way I do it. Okay, so. <laughs> I don't know why we can't remember anything. <laughs> Courtney with her seven miles of notes. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, uh, that sounds familiar. Let me refer to my filing system. 
Scroll, scroll, Every scroll, episode scroll, you've scroll, ever scroll, written scroll, is scroll, all scroll, that. Dude. You do it by hand on your phone. <laughs> I have, like, my grocery list is on here. Underneath, like, <laughs> things that I write down to remind me to tie, like, dip, t- dip shit t-shirt. Me. Then it says wow. king pillows, two blankets, bathroom stuff right under dip shit t-shirt. Then there's some random <laughs> uh, measurements, 20 and a half by 26 and a half. That referred to something before. Oh, my God. Yeah. Rake, yeah, stuff to... for fence, two doormats, porch plates. Pla- I... Uh-uh, uh-uh. Yeah. Mm-mm. Nope. It's time to start opening up your <laughs> notes for your new thoughts. <laughs> if anybody needs the wiring instructions for Meridian Title Corp, that's right below that. Okay, so. <laughs> um, Moxie Marlin Spike. Whoa! <laughs> that may or may what not. I, I d- saw that one. Well, it came from your husband, actually. I think he said it oh, to me directly. And he said this may or may not be a pseudonym, but it was on a blog. Let's just go with real. Funny. Yeah, because I have yes. fucking rules. Say it again. Moxie Marlin Spike. <laughs> and we know a Moxie. We do have a friend who named yeah. their baby Moxie. So yeah, there's a really good chance that Moxie Marlin Spike is a real fucking person. I hope so. Um, <laughs> This person is an agent of some kind, I think real estate agent, but his name is Bob Double and then comma agent is how is like his <laughs> signature line. So Bob Double agent. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. This person, I'm assuming you pronounce his name, Nick Mashiter, but it looks and in the UK would be perceived as Nick Mashiter. <laughs> <laughs> don't steal my shitter don't nick it um, these two names have been confirmed as real these came from a co-op sign up list i think charity burger mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yep and sticker delight <laughs> oh that's so good <laughs> i don't this world just gets beautifuler and beautifuler um, I think you sent me this one this morning. Harry William Balls. <laughs> B-A-A-L-S. <laughs> Harry Balls. <laughs> Harry Balls. The mayor of Fort Wayne, right? Yeah, like in the 50s. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, a film actor named Thomas Edwin Mix, which is a great name. Uh, somebody sent me, they sent us like the entire lineage of this family. But basically... There were the guns, and then there were the mixes. So Thomas Mix was an American film actor. Uh, and they said, our close friends were called the guns. A gun son married a mixed daughter, and her name was then Thomasina Gunn, which yeah. makes her a Tommy gun. <laughs> which so is cute. so cute. Um, and then this has also been confirmed. Dick Chop, who is a vasectomy specialist. Oh, shut your which- mouth. <laughs> he had no choice oh, I love it he had no <laughs> choice in the matter <laughs> and that's all I got that's good that's did, good enough I, I <laughs> sticker delight uh. it's like I found out that Billie Eilish's middle name is Pirate because they let Phineas pick <laughs> he picked mm-hmm. Pirate Sicker Delight feels like that to me. Like, you let, your, Seriously. you let your kid pick your other kid's name, and they're like, Sicker Delight. I Like, when I wanted to name our cats Balloon and Rainbow, and there were two black cats, and I was like, well, <laughs> Black Balloon. <laughs> right. <laughs> Duh. Duh. <laughs> uh, <laughs> My uh, oldest child named our dog B, and it was so grateful that he picked like a really mm-hmm. cute yeah reasonable name when and he stuck to it you know when we picked her out as a puppy and it was always going to be b but he brought well, her home and if he had picked balloon or rainbow or sticker delight would you have with a straight face like brought balloon to the vet and registered her <laughs> as balloon we never promised him he could name her. It uh, wasn't like uh, you can name her what you ever, whatever you want. He just, that was the name he wanted for uh, her. Uh, and we really liked it. But if you had if promised had... him and he had picked Balloon, would yeah, you? Yeah, I think so. 
He would have a balloon. I would definitely oh, yeah. have a balloon. Why not? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I know, but then I think about our next dog, Harvey. You're right. I think that he also tried to pick Harvey's name. I don't remember off the top of my head. Oh, yeah. I think Scallop was on the Definitely list Scallop. <laughs> because he's sort of Scallop colored. <laughs> and I decided not to name him Scallop, and now I regret it. I wish we had a bee and a, a scallop. scallop. <laughs> I wish you had a balloon and a scallop. Yeah. <laughs> I always try to name animals like sounds and things and Laura is not having it. Like dollop. Like I wanted to name Bill Dollop because he is one. <laughs> He's just a fucking dollop. No. Dot. I wanted to name him Dot. No. Speck is my all time favorite name from my all-time favorite movie, Pee-wee's Big right. Adventure, but it's already been done, so I couldn't call him Spec, but he would be a really good Spec. <laughs> He's a pretty good Bill. He's an excellent Bill. He's <laughs> such a fucking Bill. Like, he really is. <laughs> like, we ca- we called him Bill before we got him, and then he showed up, and we're like, yeah, dude, he is a Bill. <laughs> He's just... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he is a bill he's like your insurance agent (laughs) has a pug tiny 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 pug um Uh, speaking of names yeah some shouty out yeah let's let people have them have their moment in the shun in the shun i still do i really feel bad about our early patriot patrons and if you want me to try it again because in the beginning we were just like yeah lisa <laughs> p it's what they get for believing in us from the get right exactly <laughs> signing up we had three patreon fucking episodes they get this uh-huh. or zero yeah, we had exactly. multiple people sign up when we weren't giving them shit. We did, <laughs> we were just trying our best. We really did, and then they got the <laughs> shittiest, lamest recognition. I will like write you a fucking poem if you want me to try it again. So if you <laughs> feel left out, poofus, poofus, home of my poofus. <laughs> yes, That's not how it goes? I know, but it is now. <laughs> Izzy, who are early ones? Aaron definitely gets a poem. Uh, Belly yeah. Bones. Belly Bones was an early one, right? She was like number two or three. Don't know for sure. I'm pretty sure. I got. I, I see you people. Yeah. I'll bring it back around. That's right. I know. Yeah, like Isabel. V. V. I can think mm-hmm. of some of them. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. I have to go back. Crystal. Mm-hmm. But see, now we're making the ones that we can't remember off the top of our heads. Well, so, though, I think those are seriously like the first five. You're going to definitely remember your first five patrons. Anyway. Yes. Anyway. Who are our, our 107th, our... 108th, and 109th? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much to Denasia. Okay. That name is like Sorian. Like if your name is Denasia, assuming that's how it's pronounced, if it's not, please let us know. Yep. You probably have a fucking kingdom. You have an island at the very least. You have Mm -hmm. cloud friends. Yes. That bring you things and also fight on your behalf, but you don't need Mm -hmm. them to because you're the strongest warrior of the island slash Mm -hmm. kingdom. Yes. Right? Yep. I'm thinking of like the Wonder Woman tribe. Right. But that's just all in one person. Exactly right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. Gorgeous name. Thank you so much to Andrea H. Andrea. Hey, my name's Andrea. Andrea H. <laughs> and what am I doing here? You ask. Uh, I was just about to cash this million dollar check. And what am I going to do with that million dollars? Probably give some of it to people who need it. Probably uh, invent something. And also <laughs> probably um, be fashionable. <laughs> round out my fashion those are the things i'm interested in <laughs> like what else do you need <laughs> uh that's all we have for oh this week. good i, don't know. I, spent, I know it's the I, end of the month i fucking spent all my energy on andrea h there so <laughs> that's good because i just we had other people sign up but just like drop out feeling your energy just yeah i appreciate wing. it it's a lot the scorpio <laughs> full moon <laughs> right in the fucking mind and emotions i know it you scorpios man you take it to the limit tell me about it 
the best. Oof. Like, we're too busy being sexy. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about it, Courtney. Catch up. Mm-hmm. Try to fucking... Ca- I can't. I'm a mm-hmm. cat. I'm a, f- I'm a full-blown cat. I just like to like raw roar and then lay down about it i'm totally do like that's my personality <laughs> god you know what i mean me like yeah. in a nice way but i'm like oh, i gotta do all million things and then i lay down i <laughs> just <laughs> gotta lay down real hard <laughs> it's time to go nine eight <laughs> Oof. Oh, i hate bananas see... though it's my least favorite food <laughs> Yeah, you can it find really potassium is. in another way. A potato shake. <laughs> <laughs> Gross. Gross. <laughs> thank you guys for coming every week, and thank you for your support and your love. And this year continues to be fucked up, but also miraculous because of you. And I truly, sincerely mean that with every fucking bone in my body. Fuck yeah. Especially right now. It's so nice yep. when you guys send us nice notes. I can't, I just, I love it. And mm-hmm. come and see us on Instagram and Facebook and Twitter at They Will Kill. You can go to our website, theywillkill.com, and you can email us, which a lot of you do very frequently, at theywillkillpodcast at gmail.com. Great review. Subscribe. Oh my God, did you see our two new reviews? <sighs> Shit, yeah, I did. So sweet. Like, oh my God. Speaking, basically, if you took my notes app page. And put it in a review. Those were the last two reviews. They were fucking paragraphs. So nice. Yeah, so nice. So detailed. We really appreciate it so much. Yeah. Endlessly. Yeah. So much. What else? Thank you, AJ oh, Burger Hands, for our music. Your babies are getting sued, but your music is cool. <laughs> and your babies are cool, too. But they still get get the suit yeah suit cool people get sued all the time including yes. your babies <laughs> uh and remember uh, sue the cool babies just because yeah, you're cool yeah. doesn't mean you can't get sued that's what i always say no, no don't sue me i'm cool <laughs> doesn't matter too bad fair game cool Here cools go. get sued too that's gonna be my t-shirt cools <laughs> get sued too oh man We love you guys. We love you so much, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.